Like, comment, share, subscribe. We gotta do another reaction video this time with Terrence Crawford. We're gonna get straight into it. I ain't gonna do none of that extra on podium. Oh, Canelo is great. I'm happy, uh, blessed. And I can't wait to go out there and once again make history. What made you want to go up in weight classes? Is that just your constant drive to like achieve more and more? Uh, you can say a little bit of that, but at the same time, I just think my body's growing. I'm getting older. Uh, making 147 was kind of tough, so uh, it, was, it was time for me to move up. <laughs> What's been the most challenging thing about moving up that weight class? Uh, I don't know yet. You know, I, I haven't fought in the division yet, so I really don't know the challenges. I don't know how my body's going to feel. I don't know how things are going to go, but uh, I'm looking forward to it. What does it mean to see Omaha show up for you today? Oh, it means a lot because I always rep my city. I always support Omaha. And Terrence Crawford going to Dreads is crazy. Terrence Terrence Crawford going to Dreads is crazy. For Omaha to support me like I support Omaha is Crawford, going up to 154, did you think twice of going to 147, 154? A lot of people want to take a two minute fight. Going to 154, I mean, it's, 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 it's another weight class, but what made you just all, you know, go up to that weight class? Oh, man, it was, like I said before, it was tough to make it 147, you know, and uh, becoming undisputed, there was nothing for me really to prove at 147 to kill myself to make the weight. So why not move up? Turkey Al Al Alishi, if I'm, not mis I'm pronouncing it correctly, is very pursuing that fight. I know you're not looking ahead, but you know, the Canelo fight, possibly in February, is that something that in the back of your mind that, that, that you will take no matter what, even going up in uh, two more weight classes? Well, my mind is, is crystal clear on one thing, and mm -hmm. that's all the second, that's Israel Magic. I'm not thinking about worried about Canelo or anyone else for that matter. Uh, August 30 is the only fight that's in the back of my mind and in the front of my mind, side of my mind. So, uh, yeah, uh, answer your question. What's something about your opponent's fighting style that you respect that you've been kind of training for and you're hoping to, like, I guess neutralize would be the word when you when you go up against him? Well, just everything about him. You know, he's a decorated amateur. He got a lot of experience in the amateur uh, Field. Uh, he may only have 11 fights, but he's 11 fights in the world champion for a reason. So he's strong. I got to respect everything about him. You know, just like I got to respect everything about any other opponent that I've been in the ring with. Because everybody brings something different uh, to the game. Um, I know you were talking about the. the Man, Terrence Crawford, the coldest nigga out right now. I ain't gonna care. I think Kilo G said that shit too. He like, bro, Terrence. And nobody fucking with Terrence Crawford. These other guys too little. With Tank, he's the type shit. But I'm the I'm the type to feel like Ryan can get Tank. It just Tank. He don't want he don't want nobody to come in at 154. And becoming undisputed that rematch with Crawford with Spence. Did it just fall off immediately, or is it just everything that was happening with the promotions with, with PBC? I really don't know. I wasn't in contact with anybody that uh, talked about the fight. Uh, we had a rematch clause for the fight. It never came to fruition, so we just moved on. And I know um, that he's going up to 154 as well. More than likely, probably cross paths again. Have you possibly thought about that as well? Like I said, the only thing on my mind is August 3rd. I'm not thinking about any other opponent or any other fight for that matter. I know how special this, this gym here is for you and for this community. And so there's probably a bunch of your kids out here, um, just out here to support you. What does it mean to see more kids from the community that maybe don't go to this gym coming out here to support you? How do you take your role as a role model and you wanna inspire them still? Oh man, it's, 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 it's wonderful. You know, I love to see the, uh, the community come together for a positive event and show their support and come out here and just have fun and just mingle with other kids and other people. Uh, that's what it's all about at the end of the day. How about having Logan Paul out here? What does that support mean? Stop trolling. Why you just bring up Logan Paul? Oh, Logan Paul, that was dope, you know, for him to come out uh, and, and actually, you know, mingle with my community. 
being that he's not from here and uh, Omaha is not a big city for for boxing, for him to come out and show the support that he's done, uh, it, it tells, you know. Uh, I mean, it's big, though, because it's like Logan ain't just a regular guy. Oh, that's, I don't care about him. Come on now, it's Logan. Come on. The level of uh, respect he has for me. But not only that, uh, he's one of my sponsors. Hey, Terrence, those wrestling moves, I, I know you can help yourself, but, you know, showed in the wrestling ring as well, you know, not to mess with you. Uh, what was that experience like to be able to knock someone out in the in the WWE? Oh, man, it was dope. It was dope. You know, it was a, a dream come true from uh, a little kid watching WWF. You know, like I, t I told him, I was just like, man, it's, it's crazy for a kid to grow up watching, you know, Hulk Hogan, Ultimate Warrior, and all these big uh, giant figures in the uh, Wrestling Federation, well, WWE now, uh, and for you to actually idolize them as a, as a little kid, for you to grow up and actually be part of the, the show is, 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 is dope. It was a blessing. You jumped on the turn buckle and kind of like, when you dropped them, you stepped over them. Is that the first thing you're like, I got to jump up and kind of yeah, pat my yeah, chest? Yeah, and yeah. yeah, I was just like, man, I got to live in the moment, man. I got to enjoy it because at the end of the day, man, we all then had those times where we rehearsed ourselves jumping off the turnbuckle or <laughs> hitting somebody with a clothesline and, you know, just, just the craziest things that wrestlers do that I'm pretty sure we all emulated those moves and things like that. And uh, for for me, when, when the time came, I was like, man, I got to jump on the ropes. I got to jump on the ropes. But... Could you see yourself possibly, possibly doing something like that? We seen, we seen a lot of fighters, you know, being WWE, maybe later down in the career, you know, we saw Floyd doing it. Obviously, uh, we... Man, I'm small, man. <laughs> you know, we, we, we seen Floyd do a uh, partial, you know, two, 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 two shows, or I think he did two shows, but for the most part, you know, those dudes, it's just like any other sports. They go through a lot of injuries. It's, it's very tough on your body. And, and uh, I commend them because, you know, we all say uh, fake a fall. Some of them, some of them injuries that they be having is, is, is real injuries. When you've been in a sport for a long time, I mean, if you get paid for it, obviously it's like your job, but how important is it for you to still find the joy and the fun in boxing? Oh man, just being competitive. Being competitive and just wanting what you want. You know, uh, I've always been a, a, a competitive person and any and everything that I ever done and just continue to stay on top and uh, keep trying to conquer the world. Have you, have you ever thought about being a ringside after the entire commentation and giving a blow-by-blow because you are the best at it? So have you ever thought about doing that? Uh, I never really uh, thought about being in commentating or anything like that. I, I'm more so like a, a channel guy. Jam rat, you know, helping the, the fighters in the gym, helping the fighters, you know, uh, get through the things that they need to get through to be able to sit at the table and talk about boxing after boxing. Now, Terrence, uh, I've seen you spar super middleweights, but you got to spar Andre Ward. I mean, you don't have to give details. I know you guys are competitive, but what was that sparring like on, you know, fight fans on the know? It was Two dope. Goals. It was dope. It was dope. And I appreciate it, Drake. For even you know giving me the opportunity to step in the ring with him, you know, uh, I can say that you know I spar Andre Ward. That's 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 dope, you know. So you know uh, it was good sparring. It was, it was very uh, very good experience for me. I'm gonna take I'm gonna take it to the to the grave. What kind of insight did he give you? Obviously, just a little bit. Like, what did he tell you that you don't stop? We don't stop learning, right? It's the older right. we get, we never stop learning. What would he tell you, like just briefly, something that could, that during your sparring session? Uh, pretty, not, not too much, nothing. You know, what I mean, sparring. You know, like we we've sat down and talked about things outside of sparring. But uh, I think once you know we got in the ring, he was so locked in. I was so locked in. Like there was nothing really to say. We both mm -hmm. locked in and we both focused on the the task at hand.
you know, they give you extra confidence that, you know, your goal is to move up continuous and weight that you were rumbling with Andre Ward, and I'm sure Andre kind of looked at you like, you, you're strong, strong as Midwest is king. Oh, man, uh, me and Dre, man, you know, we, we work, but at the same time, it's different styles, different different fighters. I never try to compete, uh, compare any style or any fighter to an, another style or another uh, fighter. Is this Majumal fight a more technical fight that the fight fans may not know the name, but this could be possibly one of your toughest fights on paper? It could be. You know, like I said uh, in the past, every fight could be my toughest fight. I don't know until I step foot in the ring. Israel is definitely a, a, a tough opponent. Uh, we definitely not taking him lightly. We never, you know, took any shortcuts on this fight. And, uh, we shall see. We'll do two more. What's your message to young kids in Omaha that want to play one day? Uh, I just tell them to dream big and, you know, keep working hard. And is Terrence Crawford undefeated? Study and listen to it. That's in their life that want the best for them. Uh, just go get it. Just go get it. You know, because I was a kid from Omaha, Nebraska, where boxing wasn't big. There was no champions. There was no uh, big role models to look up to. And I had a, a dream. I had a mission. And I had a goal. And I just went out there and, and conquered. 40 and old, oh my God. Like anybody else would in any other city. So I would just tell them, you know, if you dream big, just, you know, keep your head to the sky and just keep working hard towards it. And, any and advice? Um, with, you know, Floyd, Dre, and you, Shakur seems to go through what many greats go through. Criticism with people that may not know the sport as well as you guys. Any kind of words that encourage, or maybe information that can enlighten the boxing fans who don't really understand what they're probably critiquing on that Shakur fight. Well, Shakur is one of the best boxers in the game, if not the best boxer, pure boxer, you know. So I just tell Shakur, just continue to doing what you're doing. Don't worry about the negative uh, attention that you're getting. Don't worry about the uh, backlash that you're getting from beating the guy convincingly. Uh, everybody's not a knockout puncher. Everybody's not going to go in there and knock every one of their opponents out as um, long as you win it fashion where there's no uh, confusion of who the winner is, then you're doing something right. Just keep winning. Hmm. And he just backed up Crawford on, I mean, uh, Shakur hard. He said, everybody's not a knockout puncher. He slid that in there like, bro, it ain't, ain't punching on shit, just like knocking niggas out. But he's winning when it comes to the, the chess game. It's a chess game. Come on, bro. If he's sitting there getting more punches off and he not, he taking less damage, of course is is going to that's why everybody comparing him to Floyd, but he don't even got the power of Floyd. So it's like Floyd with pillow hands. It's still effective. It still can have you win, but you can get if you get your ass knocked out, then it's a problem because it's like your recovery on some Devin Haney shit. Like what you gonna do then? You can't come back and really beat on the nigga. You what you gonna do? Try to win rounds after you got your ass knocked out. You might get knocked out again. It ain't different. Shakur, don't get knocked out, please. Like, comment, share, subscribe. My bad for making this about Shakur. It do.